folks. Today I'm on my way to South Africa to interview Dr. Tirhani Mabunda, who is revolutionizing the African educational system with his own school, New Kani Education Center. Let's check it out. But you sit down. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Rifat Bari, Artificial Intelligence Researcher at the Condensed Matter Research Lab at CCNY. Today I'm here with uh, Dr. Tirhani Mubanda, founder of the Tirhani Group and founder of New Yukani Education Center. So uh, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you very sure. much. Thank sure. you. So uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Mubanda? I am, um, I turn 58 years tomorrow actually. Mm. I was uh, born in Limpompo in South Africa. Uh, lost my father when I was only three. Very bright at school. I was promoted three times. Passed matric at 17 and a half. And when I went to my mother, very tiny boy, small at 17 and a half, I said to her, I've passed, I want to go to university. She says to me, you know our situation. There's no money here. You have overtaken three of your siblings who are still at school. I must push them. You can fend for yourself. You've passed metric. Mm -hmm. I had to go and look for work. Fortunately, I found work at 17 and a half. And I have worked ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in 1981 when I found work. And uh, I've worked ever since, but I had this hunger for education. So I started studying part-time. And I think right now I must have more than ten or close to a dozen uh, qualifications, academic qualifications and designations. Uh, some of them obtained in the U.S. for auctioning about four. And uh, even a PhD as the highest uh, qualification that I have, yeah. uh, part-time whilst working. And as you said, I also built uh, Tirani Group Holdings whilst working and studying. Yeah, and, and that doesn't come as a surprise to me because your name Mubandi means uh, to work. Uh, am I right? Tirani. Tirani. Oh. So Tira, yeah. um, Tira in Shitsonga, which is my language, yeah. means work. Uh -huh. Tirani means working. Uh, okay. And my father gave me the name when I was born in 1963. Wow. He says I'm Tirani, and work has always followed me ever since. Wow. And you, uh, you're able to work so much because you love what you do, right? I mean, you started from a very small, uh, poor rural village in uh, Guiani, uh, Lompopo province, as you said, and you went all the way to uh, being the founder of uh, Tirhani Group, managing 17 companies and getting a PhD at the same time and founding your own school, right? So, I mean, what? how did your childhood shape you and your values and how did it impact who you are today you know um, Rifa sometimes abundance or privilege it's a case I know so many people who were born uh, into families where there was uh, abundance and there's resource and there is wealth but they are nothing today because they didn't have the hunger to achieve anything so sometimes when you are pushed against the wall, here's this 17 and a half year old boy, I have nothing, I don't have any support, my father is not there, my mom is battling to you know, push the other kids. And when you find that you're on your own, you just have to bury yourself into something. And so um, sometimes, uh, as I said, uh, abundance is a curse because when people at the click of the finger can call on a maid or call on anything, they get lazy even to wash themselves. Whereas if you find that you don't have anything, uh, if you are on the ground, how far down can you go? You have to get up and, yeah. and help yourself and help others. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that reminds me of something that... Uh Professor Klopper and uh, Professor Anderson was also talking about is that crisis makes or improves someone's character. And uh, what you are talking about, your crisis, 
early in childhood made you who you are a self-made yes. uh, working man uh, and that kind of makes me think that uh, maybe we should engineer our own crisis so that we can improve our character uh, uh, and and be forced to to face ourselves and, and to improve our values and and to look at ourselves in the mirror um, so my next question is about passion so you found your passion for auctioneering when uh, when you met a uh, auctioneer from the cool group mm -hmm. if I if I'm right in 2000 mm -hmm. uh, and you saw how he auctioneered and uh, you were inspired by that uh, but that was an accident um, how how would you encourage others to find their passion and how did you find your strengths and how would you tell others to find their strengths it's a pity education systems across the world don't often unearth people's talents and passion because passion is the ingredient for building successful and um, you know careers and now the education system doesn't do that and most of the times the world always looks for the negative to prevent it they don't look for the positive to build on it yeah. which is a tragedy because if you find like i do i i do what i love every day mm -hmm. hence which is to build companies and to uh, you know yeah, like Warren it, Buffett, yeah. exactly yeah. so if you find that you do what you love mm -hmm. you can't tire doing it yeah you can do it 24 hours a day uh -huh. and people will say when do you sleep <laughs> You don't have to sleep because you're loving what you're doing. And not that it's good because also your body can react in funny ways. But the quest answer to your question is people must strive to find their passion. Most of the times when you ask a person, what are you good at? They tell you their qualifications. Because they don't even know what drives them, what you know, makes them tick. What? Interesting. Yes. Yeah. And they'll just tell you, no, I'm an accountant and I do. But that's not who you are. That's good. You know, me, I'm, I'm an ideator. I do ideation. I think. Uh -huh. all, and I'm strategic. Hence, I'm able to think and dream. And I'm able to build because I'm strategic as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm hardworking. So my strength, God-given strength, mm -hmm. are thinking strategy and hard working mm -hmm. you know and because i discovered them i'm the happiest person ever mm -hmm. and money doesn't drive me mm -hmm. we make money sometimes my daughter once asked me um because one of my employees came home in a, a, a bentley or an aston martin and he called me boss because i was his boss and she says, but why does he call you boss when he has a, a better car than yours? I said, no, it's a choice. <laughs> she says, if you made more money, what would you do? I said, I'll build another school <laughs> or I'll build a hospital uh -huh. because it's a choice. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a very good, uh, good way to put it. People say their qualifications because they don't know what they love. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Um, and when you ask someone, who are you? They do give their qualifications as, as a way. They don't give you who they uh, are. Right. Uh, what they is don't know. Right. Because it is so hard. They tell you what it is so hard to them. find your passion. It exactly. is so difficult. Exactly. Uh, and especially uh, uh, when the kids, their passion is actively taken away from them. Maybe because a teacher uh, doesn't build the right relationship with them. Uh, maybe there is a subject they love, but the teacher, you know, doesn't foster the curiosity. Uh, bans the questioning. Uh, yeah, w would you like to yeah, say something about that? You know, school sometimes kills the curiosi curiosity in kids. When you go and you ask uh, the lowest grade uh, of school a question, you hear all the kids want to give you an answer. <coughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And the teacher points at uh, Rifa, yeah. then Rifa gives an answer. Uh -huh. Okay? And when Giva Rifa, uh, Rifa gives an answer, the teacher moves on. But there were 30 kids in the classroom. All of them were going in. Who said each of the 30 have the same answer as Rifa? Yeah. By the time kids are in their eighth grade, they know. 
There's only one answer to a question, yeah. and Rifa will answer it. Mm -hmm. Why bother even raise your hand yeah. when the teacher asks? Yeah. So by the time they're at high school, when a question is asked, you scramble to see any child raising their hand to answer it. The, the curiosity yeah. has been killed already. Right. Take a kid in the house. When the kid starts walking and they start opening all the doors, the parents tie the doors. When they go close to the TV, they say, don't. They go, don't. Now a kid learns. You must just tiptoe around the passage. You can't go discover anything in the house. Who cares? Yeah. Let the kid open the cupboard, take the place out or whatever it takes, build something or break some of them. But in that process, the kid will learn something. Yes. No, you're, you're absolutely right. The, the creativity is beaten out of the kids because you, you look at the uh, kindergarten and you look at the 12th grade and the participation difference between them is of like course. is is a uh, day and night. And it, it's more than just the, the creativity is beaten out of them. It's also about a dogma, I think, because the students are not allowed to question what the teacher is asking. And like you said, you touch the TV, uh, don't touch the TV. You do this, you don't do that, right? If you question anything the teacher says, you, I mean, you're gonna be up in flames, right? Yes. So uh, I think that's, math and science is all about skepticism and, and curiosity and, uh, and, and wondering. But if you are all about dogma and don't question what the teacher says, accept what is given. And you know, you just like tabula rusa, you just take what is given and you receive it. Then you are just, you have knowledge, but you don't have creativity. Exactly. You have what was there before, but you won't make something new. And uh, most class, you know, the, the, the schedule, in the schedule, the time that is given for a class mm -hmm. is 30 minutes. Yeah. You tell me. Is that enough time for a teacher to introduce a, a topic for the day no. and to teach? That's why teachers will just give the knowledge and walk away. Yeah. I mean, it should take minimum two hours mm -hmm. for someone to introduce a topic, have a circle of sorts where the learners can also participate. That is where the problem is. Yeah. Schooling is not meant to discover the talents of the learners. It's not even meant for the learners to be active participants. Now, we should question, what is the purpose of schooling then? For you to get a qualification, which is not a mistake when people yeah. are asked who they are. Mm -hmm. They tell you their qualifications mm -hmm. because they are their qualification. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, the curricular restrictions, the administrative restrictions on teaching also put a burden on teachers to have uh, X amount of students complete Y amount of assignments in Z amount of days. And so that creates a kind of rush. The students are forced to memorize instead of understand. Uh, and that's also, there is many, many components, but those are some key factors. That kind of a, a rush creates memorization. The dogma destroys creativity and, um, and the time factor, as you mentioned. Now you have your own school. You founded your own school, Nyukani Education Center. What makes Nukani unique? And what were the challenges you faced in making your own school? Very good question. Firstly, I founded Nukani because I thought someone needs to come up with an intervention that would begin to introduce a new angle into learning. Mm -hmm. So some of the challenges that we found, so we go to the department, they need at grade 12 or 12th grade, seven subjects for you to get your certificate. So we say, no, we want to introduce other soft subjects like entrepreneurship and uh, uh, you know life skills, yeah, yeah. just for people to know how to manage their finances. And then they say, oh, 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 you can't overload the learners. You must teach seven subjects only. So we then say, okay, I came up with something at Newcanny. And I said, we call it the forestry system. You know, if at 58 now, I bought a forestry company, mm -hmm. the ones that build the forestry trees. Yeah. It takes 30 years for the forestry tree to grow and to a point where it can harvest it. Okay. If I bought that company now and we planted the forest, 
I won't live <laughs> to see the first harvest. Yes, yes. That's why we called it the forestry. Okay. Because I then said, we must start at grade R and build our own children who from that age will teach them not to be overloaded. They must know that they can take up to 15 subjects. But some of them are soft subjects to teach them you know, life skills for life. Uh, they'll still do the seven that is required by the department. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, we feel we should affiliate to someone overseas and do our own thing. Mm -hmm. That will develop. Hence, we're looking for partnerships to collaborate with other people even outside. But the biggest challenges that we've found in building the school is the system is not flexible to accept new thinking. You know? Yeah. And you then find that uh, you are a fish that must now swim in the soil <laughs> and and how can a fish swim in the soil okay, yeah. you know uh, it's it's ultimately it's impossible uh -huh. then either you comply or but also we find that uh, because we didn't want to make it a non fee paying school it's a fee paying school albeit we subsidize the fee mm -hmm. as the company but even the subsidized fee which is at 50 percent of normal rates the parents don't pay. Then the burden is on you. Now with COVID coming, you find that it just becomes very difficult. So s those are some of the challenges that we face. Hence, we now have a program, want to reach out to the world. If there are people who can help us, they can help us, yeah. um, you know, f get bursaries for the children and all of that. But otherwise, there's no regrets for what we started there. Next time you are here in South Africa, we want you to go there and mm -hmm. see it for yourself physically. Yes. It's such a wonderful space in the rural area where there's no running water, there's no sewer. Yeah. It's where you came from. We, exactly. Yes. yes. Back to where you started. Thank you. Yes. And it's uh, very uh, humbling to see someone uh, give back to their own community. Hopefully I can be in a position to to do that and uh, hopefully I can help by uh, giving back to Nukani as well. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to ask is you said uh, COVID-19 impacted Nukani. Uh, COVID-19 was a crisis and you were talking about how crisis can build character. Now COVID also presented the opportunity of remote learning, right? So uh, I see that uh, your uh, school logo uh, is both a book and a tablet. So you are also trying to integrate uh, the old with the new, so trying to integrate remote learning and the artificial intelligence and the the entrepreneurship classes into Nukani. Yes. So, talk a little bit about that. Why are you interested in integrating new technologies? What do you think it can bring? Yeah. You know, Nukani, the the vision is said that we we are here to change society. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that. Uh, uh, Time is moving and there are new interventions, technological innovations and all of that. Now, if you look back, say, 40 years, there were cassettes, there were vinyl, there were, some of them are coming back, but there were Kodak cameras and those things are, have been phased out. Yeah. Now, some of the things that we have today will not be here in 20 years. So we have to, yeah. you know, it's not survival of the fittest anymore. It's survival of the most adaptive mm -hmm. species. You know, you have to adapt to change. Yeah. Uh, you know the boiling frogs in Rome, um, yeah. if you take a frog, you put it in a pan of cold water, so of hot water rather, it jumps out immediately. But if you take the same frog, you put it in a pan of cold water and you heat the water up gradually, the frog will sit there and at some point when the water is getting warm, it will even enjoy it and until it boils to death. The moral of that story is that f for as long as change is happening gradually, most people don't see. And it's happening around. Even as I speak to you now, uh -huh. change is happening, mm -hmm. but we don't see it. Unless it's radical. So By then it's too late. You, you die in the pan yeah, because yeah. you have boiled now <laughs> with the water. So why I'm saying that is uh, to answer your question. We embrace change mm -hmm. because if you follow the root learning of current time, 
some of the jobs that you're teaching people for now will be, gone. Will be extinct yeah. by the time they graduate. Yeah, that's right. But it, it sounds obvious when you say it, but there are, it, it's not obvious at all because there are so many schools that are not open-minded like that. They are not uh, open to new technologies like AI or, or including life skills like entrepreneurship as part of the classes. Mm -hmm. It, it sounds obvious, but it's a very difficult thing to do. So thank you for, for uh, giving back with, with uh, Nukani. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you for taking the time to be. Thanks a lot.